Hey, what's up? It's Snell. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by Dominic over in the UK. Tangerine Dream Rubicon. Oh my goodness. I've been putting this off. Gatefold. But, oh my, just, wow. Where do I even begin? It's Tangerine Dream. And 1975. One of my personal favorite Tangerine Dream recordings. Now, there's a couple you just can't go wrong with. Rubicon being one of them, but, like, I really need to get a copy of Klangvald and, uh, just, like, Zeit in general, but, or Zeit, I always mispronounce that stuff, but Rubicon, hell yeah. Again, if you're a fan of... Blood Incantations, Time Wave Zero, with that Wolves in the Throne Room, Electronic, Instrumental, Celestite record. Wait, was it called Celestite? It's not the black metal one. It's like all just synthesizers. But that was just Wolves in the Throne Room getting their Tangerine Dream on. Now, is it new age is it ambient is it progressive well it's a little bit of everything together but also just beautifully and yet kind of hauntingly written synthesizer passages sequences just it, it's incredible the creativity that was composed by Tangerine Dream on Rubicon. Like, it's just one of those records that just puts a fucking smile on my face every time I listen to it. And I just, I really need to build my Tangerine Dream collection. This is the only record I have at the moment. But, like, I, I swear this... I put the B-side on, because, like, the chanting and stuff, it's legitimately, like, spooky at times, and I fucking love it. And it's just something that's hard to put my finger on. But at the same time, again, there's this film called Altered States, and this record came out a few years before. But when I listen to it, it reminds me of that film. I don't know if that makes sense, because this was created before Altered States, but I forget if Altered States is a adaptation of a novel or something. But, like, first off, you have Chris and Peter, Edgar Rose as well, who we have one of his solo releases I've yet to also go over. I know I've shown this a lot. Just, and that's first press. But, like, there's a reason these tracks are, like, 20 minutes. The build-up is part of the fun. And then, like, once it starts, like, kicking in and shit starts jamming, that's when this style of music, to me, is really when it's like, all right, this is my shit. Because you guided me in, got my attention, and then, boom. Like, this is fucking great. Seriously, 
like, again, I keep, I'm gonna keep bringing this up. Because I know all these, like, funeral doomers are going to be all hyping this up, regardless of its quality, saying it's sick and I'm an idiot or whatever. No, it's just not the type of funeral doom I, I really like. I don't have four hours, four plus hours. And, like, if I have a free 83 minutes to listen to music, I'm probably going to listen to Sleep Dope Smoker. Because, I, again, I purposely just got it on cassette. So I wouldn't have to just get up and down every, like, 20 minutes. But, back to Tangerine Dreams Rubicon. Now, again, like... This lineup and, like, everything about fucking Tangerine Dream, in my opinion, is just, like, incredible. But again, I know this type of music is not for everyone. But, let's see what stuff was, um, used. So, Rubicon Part 1 at 17 minutes and 18 seconds. Composed and played by Edgar Froze, Chris Franke. I, I I'm gonna butcher these names, these last names. I apologize. And Peter Ballman, but uh, a, a Mellotron guitar and a VCS3 synthy. Chris plays a double move synthesizer, synthi A organ modified, Elka organ, and prepared piano, and Peter plays organ, synth, synthi A, E piano, and prepared piano. And then there's a gong on this track another double move synthesizer but an e piano and a a voice as well as an arp 2600 and it sounds fucking great like it really does i love the cover art it's just basic and I also love this little like image up here it's like this like little kid just like lost in this this craziness and uh, I don't know what the symbolism is here to be honest with you but it's just an incredible, you know, release and everything. And something that, in my opinion, has aged wonderfully. Like, just when it comes to everything, Tangerine Dream is pretty ridiculous, honestly. Like, this was recorded <clears throat> January 1975 at the Manor Ship in on Cherwell. And uh, this is on Vir Virgin Records. I hope I don't get in trouble, honestly, for playing this. I hope it wasn't too loud that YouTube will really care, but I like these old Virgin Records because, like, the A sides, I've gone over this before, but the A sides green and the B sides red. I just think that stupid stuff's cool sometimes. But I'm gonna throw the A side on real quick of Rubicon. Just cause I, I love the whole entire release. I just really wanted to hear that chant part. Cause it's just bad ass. Kind of go in the middle. Now again, this is a, 
kind of spooky one until it gets to that part where everybody's kind of on the same page and ready to go forward. I'm not sure how Tangerine Dream wrote these, but the build-up is very important, and it's just as important. To me, these songs are like journeys, and the same goes for like Quad Incantation and Time Wave Zero. Because, like, technically, you know, like, some of these tracks are broken down in sequences and whatnot. And it's kind of, you know, awesome, honestly. <clears throat> but, again, we have the cassette coming. So, in the near future, I will get back to talking about this mighty record. As it just gets better with every listen, honestly. And the influence is just huge as well. Like, not only on Blood Incantation, but Frogness. Like, myself, personally, just... I'm a huge Tangerine Dream fan. I always have been... Like, I was one of those kids in high school that, like, I legitimately, like, remember getting Halloween 3 just so I could make myself, like, a recording of certain parts of the soundtrack. Just because, and, like, same with Dawn of the Dead. Like, I remember, like, I've had my own, like, I used to have this crazy way of, like, recording and shit. Like, it was such a pain in the ass before I edited it on a computer that, like, I figured out a way to kind of pretty much, like, make samples. But not really. It's hard to explain, but, like, you would pretty much like, record a video that you were watching using, like, at the time, I used to have one of those, like, uh, like, just, like, tape recorders that, like, police would use. Like, you just would put a regular tape in. Like, it was like a talk boy. And I would just put it up to the TV and record and I would get, you know, like, the intro, The Shining, that Wendy Carlos, like, real, that, that intro track and stuff. And I just thought that shit was, like, so cool. Because at the time, you weren't going to find a Halloween 3 Season of the Witch original soundtrack. Like, fuck no. And... Again, with Tangerine Dream, their discography is ridiculous. The side projects, um, it's just, but again, the build-up is just, like, one of the coolest parts about Tangerine Dream for me. Because it just really helps set the vibe up. And then, again, it's like a journey. Like, there's part one that's kind of like, all right, like, we're just kind of warming our instruments up. And then it just kind of brings you along and brings you along until you're just in the dome zone. And, like, just, you know, like, here comes the spaceship. And this is, again, like, what I'm talking about, building up, and, like, kind of being a tease about it at times, because this is just unreal. I just, I love this shit, and I'm not being biased, like, Tangerine Dream Rubicon, this is a classic for a reason. And if you're a 
a fan of instrumental, ambient, progressive, new age, or whatever you want to call it. Just amazing. How about that? Some amazing instrumental music from the 1970s. See? Like, fuck yes. Like, pretty much to me, like, this is the song actually starting. And, yeah, it might be, like, ten minutes in, but I don't care. Because it's got my attention. And that's all that fucking matters. And it's good. It's not like it's bullshit. All killer, no filler. That is Tangerine Dream Rubicon. I think this is, yep, 1975. So I guess this is a first press. I mean, it doesn't matter, but still. Anytime you get a, like a, one of these old paper sleeves made in Great Britain, hell yeah. And I love this is a gatefold. Thank you again, Dominic. Like such a gnar this was such a gnarly like gift and shit. Like I remember getting this like package and just being like, oh my fuck. Like this is ridiculous. But such a killer release right here. Obviously, all this information is dead out of date. I don't, I don't want to give you, you know, how to get a hold of uh, Edgar Froze in Berlin, you know. But Tangerine Dream, pretty much like the, the kings almost. But if you're looking for some killer. Like, 1970s, instrumental, mostly synthesizer-driven music. You can't go wrong with Tangerine Dream. Now, as much as I love, like, Goblin, you kind of can go wrong sometimes with Goblin. It depends on what you're listening to. But, like, there are certain Goblin tracks that, to me, you know, it's, like, one of the reasons I, like, love synthesizer music to begin with. And like even John Carpenter, there's some tracks where it's like, man, <laughs> like what the fuck? But then there's other times where as soon as that original like Halloween theme kicks in, it's just like wow, like just wow, just that bass, and also just like whenever the shape like just that didn't, 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 didn't. It's like the most simple, yet, like, haunt. It, it's fucking, like, it's meant to be, it's a horror movie, but, like, it just works so well with the shape, Michael Myers, whatever. But, like, I feel like John Carpenter should have, like, collaborated with Tangerine Dream. But that never happened. But, you know, I always thought, maybe they did, and I just don't know about it. But, like, I just think that would be a cool, like, jam session. Like, back in the 70s, like, hey, you know, you let's uh, smoke some cigarettes and, <laughs> and uh, play some synthesizers. But, Tangerine Dream Rubicon, it's a classic for a reason, and I know some of you might be like, my dad likes this band. Well, yeah, that means your dad probably has pretty good taste in music. Because, again, like I said, Tangerine Dream play the type of instrumental music that you wish you had the a 
ability to not only get the equipment, because the equipment used here is ridiculous, but I'm trying to think of a word. Like, it's not inspiration, but like just the intuition and like knowledge of your instruments to create something of the caliber of Rubicon, Klangwald, like German Krautrock, Ambient, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, it's one of the, those things like, you know, Krautrock's Krautrock, but like Tangerine Dream to me is Tangerine Dream. But I do, you know, I, because a lot of that stuff, it gets like all lumped together and gets confusing of subgenres and all that and you know for years I you know was like and I still am in love with the band Zombie from Pittsburgh Pennsylvania like probably one of my absolute favorite live instrumental bands because There'll be times Steve Moore will be playing the bass and like doing the keyboards at the same fucking time. And it's just like, especially when playing Orion off Cosmos, it's ridiculous. If you've never seen Zombie with an I, not an E at the end, like Alessio Fulci film, then you know what the fuck I'm talking about. But Tangerine Dream Rubicon, again, if you're looking. To get into this type of music, for real, get your feet wet with Rubicon, because you will not be disappointed. And if you like what you hear from Tangerine Dream, make sure to check out Edgar Froze's. Again, I apologize if I mispronounced Edgar's last name, but Eclipsen in Malaysian Pale. This is another just virgin gem right here so good and it, this is a lot more like chill like it says up here kraut rock 1975 first press epsilon in malaysian pale but uh yeah, really awesome. This was recorded. And uh, here it, it gives you the studio in Berlin and like all the other shit, which is cool. But it doesn't tell you which, uh, you know, uh, instruments were used. But it's all good. I'm just, again, grateful to have this record in my collection. Thanks to Dominic. But thank you, Maniacs, for watching. It's almost time for patron picks. But um, by the time you watch this video, it might already be done. So I might have to rearrange some shit. But join the patron for real. Every little bit helps save me from YouTube's bullshit rules. So every dollar helps. Updated daily. But... Thanks for watching. Watching supports the channel. Like and subscribe. You fucking rule. Thanks again. Hails. I can't yet do it. I don't want to rip the stitches out. Peace.